if we have to compare the boiling points of one or more substances, we can sort of estimate very quickly which one will boil at higher temperatures. And it all comes down to one factor. One factor, and that is if we have a beaker. This isn't a very good beaker. But that beaker contains molecules of a substance. Then the one factor is how much how much how much force is there between the molecules? How much force between molecules? And this can also be referred to as intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. And so if we have strong intermolecular forces, then perhaps these molecules are, are bonding. They're attracting each other very strongly. And so they won't break apart. It will be much harder to boil them if they're all clinging to each other. So strong forces equal high boiling point. So the only thing we have to do is determine what makes a strong force. What do we have to do? What makes up a strong force? What is, uh, or, or sorry, what determines the force? What determines the force? And so really there's three key factors to what determines the force. And one is size, size of molecule, shape, the shape of the molecule matters, and also the types of bonds. And so if we want to find out, oops, for, for instance, if we look at the types of bonds, there could be, well, I'll, I'll use an example here. If we have a molecule whose shape looks like this, then what this does is it forms a hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond or a polar bond between two atoms that are electronegative. Polar bond or a ionic bond. Those are examples of strong bonds. And so if a molecule has a hydrogen bond, a polar bond, or an ionic bond, then the overall intermolecular forces are going to be great. And these types of bonds are greater than weak bonds, which are covalent, or they revolve around London forces. These ones are sort of weaker. So mostly, mostly the covalent bonds are weaker. Um, also, well, I mean, covalent bond would be a bond that isn't polar, nonpolar. So these types of bonds are weak, and these types are strong. So this would have a higher boiling point because it has a hydrogen bond, higher boiling. Now the shape matters because the intermolecular forces, or the van der Waals forces, are greater when they when the molecule has a greater surface area. So these are greater when molecule molecular surface area is great. Whoops. Molecular surface area is great.
And so if we compare two shapes, if we compare a rectangle, terribly drawn rectangle, versus a sphere, then the sphere has lower surface area, low surface area, whereas a rectangle has high surface area. And so we can conclude from this that if you have higher surface area, you have greater intermolecular forces, so higher or less spherical and longer. You know, the longer an object is, the higher the surface area. So if it's more rod-like, is higher, is higher boiling point. whereas a sphere has a low boiling point. And so I can give an example of this. If we have a molecule that has a shape like this, then the shape is sort of almost kind of like a rod. And if we compare that to a, another molecule, a molecule that looks more like a sphere, like that, then we can conclude from that that this has higher boiling point. And this is lower. Now, the other factor is, of course, mass. Mass also has to do with the size. So that I'll add this here, mass matters. So in general, if you have greater mass, greater mass, greater mass equals greater number of atoms. And so if you have a high amount of atoms, then you have not only higher probability of uh, strong bonds, higher likelihood or probability of strong bonds simply because you have more atoms and you will have greater size you have greater size so in general greater mass has a greater size and so Greater mass equals higher boiling point. Oops, higher boiling point. And so, one other type of thing. When we compare the, the types of uh, bonds, I can give you a couple of examples of those as well. So, if it's just a dipole, we might have a molecule that looks like this then this is going to be attracting other molecules simply through dipole, dipole interactions. And an ionic bond might look like we might have nitrogen, and this might be positively charged, and it might encounter, might encounter a negatively charged fluorine. And so this type of bond would be ionic. And then uh, as above here, I wrote earlier that this might matter because we have a hydrogen bond. So that would be a hydrogen bond. So overall, what matters is size, mass, shape, and type of bond. A greater mass is a higher boiling point a more high surface area shape will have a higher boiling point and the more polar the bonds are the higher the boiling point